Hello fellow quad sim players, it's that time again when we've got another release out. This is the 043 Alpha release and it's kind of, well I would say it's a kind of a more boring release because it doesn't do anything exciting like add cars but at the same time in this release we're seeking to fix all the controller problems that people had. So exciting for people that frustratingly couldn't get their radios or controllers working before because I think, fingers crossed, we have cracked it. That said, it's not all boring because I've changed the way um, some of the physics and power settings work on the quad. So even if it was working, watch this uh, because you might need to change some settings from what you had originally. But I'll talk about some of the smaller and easier changes first. And there are a couple. Um, Lord Quad uh, talked about some grammar issues I had and I picked up a few spelling problems as well, so they're fixed. Um, we had the graphical glitch. It was one of the things I frustratingly had to leave in uh, at the end of the last release because I couldn't figure it out. I have figured it out since. It's that Unity problem again with the, the clipping planes on the camera. Um, we had to, if you go back a few releases ago, I, I talked about how I got rid of the flickering shadows by using a sort of a far clipping plane for one camera and a close clipping plane for another. And we need a close clipping plane because there's times when the camera is smacked on the floor like that and if the clipping plane's not far enough then it just won't render anything close up um, and basically trial and erroring uh, led me to make these tiny adjustments that were just enough so the um, little glitches would go away but it would render close enough anyway so that that's fixed which is great news because it was really distracting to me having this little thing just flash up every now and then uh, another thing lots of people uh, moaned about a bit is the fact that they kept losing the ball or the balls um, there was the little hidden ball up on on the hill as you'll see here and um, what the the normal thing was I suggested you might want to chase it down before it disappears um, because once you knocked it out it would have a big bounce down the hill and then end up falling out of the world if you weren't really fast and good enough to knock it back so I've just put a little bit of code in that stops the balls going out now so if they hit the end of the world they'll sort of bounce gently back again so you can take that large ball that was up in the hill and play with it you can put it in the path of cars and that and watch them hit it bits and pieces like that we found another floating builder and thanks to Oliver for spotting this who spotted the last floating building in the um, the last video actually and he'd actually spotted it because I'd gone through all the buildings and I thought they were fine but he was actually flying there with the external camera and this showed up a completely different angle uh, and he was able to, to spot another floating building which I've since repaired. Um, this also exposed another problem where because of the changes I made to have this sort of front props not rendering uh, from the FPV camera they weren't rendering on the external camera so that's fixed as well. Okay building colliders so Montexed FPV noted that on this sort of lovely looking building with the three holes in the top he couldn't dive through it and uh, yeah he's absolutely right if you try to do it you sort of bounce off like there's a, an invisible wall there and that's exactly what there was in um, the unity game engine there are a thing called colliders so you have your model which has its own mesh so in order to tell the game engine there's actually something there you need to define what's called a rigid body and then you need to add these things called colliders. A collider is is what it sounds like. It's something that uh, if two colliders from models hit together there is there is a collision and you can obviously uh, then code to that. So obviously if quad collider hits building collider then you know bounce off. Trouble is the shapes you have for colliders are primitive so you have a box um, a sphere and a, a capsule and when you've got complex geometry like this building um, it's long and arduous task to basically arrange primitive shapes to do it so I use something called a mesh collider a mesh collider takes more CPU but it tries to work out what the mesh is and makes a collider from that but what it can't handle is holes so if you've got holes or a sort of a regular shape uh, and this, this building was classic because it had holes and it had a big sticky out bit and basically it filled it in. It sort of said, yeah, it goes up the building and then sort of goes, chum, there's my collider. So as soon as you go near the building, you bounce off of it. So I spent about an hour and a half making 36 boxes uh, that all joined together. It it's, takes so long because it's so hard to manoeuvre around the 3D space to make sure you're lined up on every single thing. Um, it made me think I was doing it wrong, but I, I've, I've checked back and... There's, there's better ways of using mesh colliders 
um, using more sort of more primitive models to stick together. But yeah, this is this is the way to do it essentially. Um, it takes a long time, but it was quite satisfying to finally be able to fly in and out of the model and stuff. Um, and while I was there, there's another model which had the same problem. Um, this antenna on top of this building, I literally just had a box around it to say if you, if you try to go into this you'll bounce off. So what I've done, uh, took less time fortunately because there's only three extra things to do, is, is add the colliders correctly so you can fly through the antenna but if you bump into it you will bounce off as per normal. So that's fixed. So okay, the, the, the big feature for this one is to try and fix uh, control problems that people were having. Throughout the development of this, uh, I spent more time trying to fix control problems than, than anything else and that's uh, because when people report a control problem it, there's a lot of uh, exchanges between myself and them trying to work out what's going on and, and what's happening and what the problem could be and sometimes we get it sorted and sometimes confusingly I'm like well, I don't understand what's happening here. I, I, I'll show you the problem and it, it's literally because when I've worked on all the radios I've got the free skies and even plugging in my sort of uh, USB dongle everything's been fine. Let me plug this in and I'll show you what I mean. Just interrupted by a phone call, that was annoying. So I've got my Tyrannus in, um, connected now and I've, I've reset the SIM. Having connected up, you'll see that all I have to do is move the sticks and they are not only mapped correctly, their movement is complete and full. So if, for example, I was going to mode one and say remap controls, uh, move stick for pitch, move stick for roll, Move throttle, move your. It's all good. Throttle's there, rolls there, pitch there, yours there. Really easy to uh, sort out. Now I'm gonna unplug this and uh, reset the sim again. And that was my experience. So whether I was using a FreeSky radio, I was using this little dongle. Um, everything always worked. So I never thought about having an issue. Um, remapping controls which people kept having a problem with and I couldn't work out why until um, I got an email from Chris who was using this dongle which is sort of vaguely labelled as FMS Turnergy Lead um, and he said he was he couldn't um, remap the sticks for some reason he, he managed to calibrate a couple of the X's but some were missing and I was like I don't understand why that's happening. And we went through various bits of debug and stuff, but he still couldn't work out. And eventually, Chris bought something similar to this, and it worked fine. Um, and so he kindly sent me this along so I could figure out what the issue was. And it's quite interesting. If I plug this in, you'll see this appears as PPM. Every single one of these um, USB dongles I've seen or used comes up with a different name. There must be so many varieties. I'm going to plug this in the back of my... Um, Turnergy 9X in its little trainer port here. And if you look, my full stick only goes to about like less than a third. So if you were going to try and remap a control, the control remap would need sort of 70% of um, the, the movement of the sticks to register. And the problem, I mean, we could have recalibrated, we could have got pitch, we could have got roll, but if we look at throttle, nothing's happening and we look at your it's it's tied to throttle so we'd always have one missing um, and this is quite a, a good time to introduce the radio debug screen which I built for trying to give people the idea of what's happening on their radios and if you click on that you'll see basically what the radio looks like to the, the sim so we can see our roll we've got some movement there we've got more on one side than the other weirdly uh, pitches on axis one we've got the throttle you'll notice is moving axis 4 uh, and throttle is currently allocated to axis 2 so that would need to be remapped and our yaw is moving the throttle and axis 2 so lots wrong there so previously I've said to you remap the controls and then you can calibrate but of course what we're dealing with here is uncalibrated data and that's where I was going wrong before so what I've done is I've rewritten the calibration so we can always calibrate first all the sticks at once so it knows what you're using and then you should be able to remap them. So now if you say calibrate sticks, it will first say center all the sticks, which I've done here, give a five second countdown and at zero they should be centered and then it says move the sticks around. So what I'm wanting you to do here is just move them in circles like this. At that point, 
we should be calibrated. So if we look at roll now, we've got the full movement, we've got pitch, throttle still doesn't do anything because we've not remapped anything and you'll move the throttle all the way. So if now we remap the controls, pitch, roll, throttle, your, then we've got our sticks all good and working and again if we can show radio debug we will see that pitch is there, roll is there, your is correctly on 2 and throttle is on axis 4. Hooray! So I'm hoping this joystick debug screen isn't actually necessary and once you do the calibration and the remap you should see what's going on. Um, I've included it here because there are some weird anomalies and some radios and you can see stuff going on. Um, what I've noticed is sometimes on these dongles is as you're doing stuff you'll see the buttons flash up and, and back. Um, all these types of radios when they, they have their hid information which is, is basically their interface uh, definition they'll have a certain number of axes and they'll have a certain number of buttons where a button is literally an on off and an axis is a proper thing. So even the Tyrannus, which has 32 uh, channels, which could be axes, only has eight actual axes and it has 24 buttons. So when we talk about maybe implementing things like uh, using switches to um, reset the position and stuff like that, we will have to be thinking about, is this gonna be on a button or is it gonna be on a, an axis and how is this gonna affect things? So that's something for me to think about in the future. So if you still can't get your joysticks working and you've done the calibration and you can look at the debug and see what's going on and you, you still can't seem to remap then I really want to know about it because I've <laughs> I've done lots on this and I really want it to work. Okay so the other joystick issue we had was multiple joysticks and this isn't like you've connected up two radios and you, you don't want to use one of them because of course you've just unplugged one. So certain window systems were picking up devices as joysticks and so when you were plugging your radio in, nothing was happening because it was saying, I've already got a joystick here. So we needed to support multiple joysticks. So what this looks like, and I've still got this one connected at the moment. If I plug my Tyrannus in again, to sort of emulate what we had here, and I say connect that, you should see that on the screen, we have a little thing saying alternative joysticks, or not alternative, alternate joysticks detected. So if you get this and it comes up with the joystick you want to use, you don't have to worry about it. But if you seem to be stuck and typically you wouldn't have a joystick, it would say unknown or something like that or come up with some sort of device that you use, not a joystick, you might want to click um, on alternate joystick connected. And then it will say, select the joystick you want to fly with. And in this case, we would say, I want to fly with Free Sky Tyrannus. Um, and then it just works. And at that point where you select it from the menu, um, if I was to come out of the sim and restart it, it would, if your joystick's plugged in, um, it would recognize that and, and use it. So if I unplug this now, for example, it would go back to PPM. But if I then plug this back in again, it should say, oh, your Free Sky Tyrannus is detected and that's your favorite joystick, so we'll use that one. So that is hopefully another big feature fixed. Now, aside from flying directly with joysticks attached, um, one of the other things you can use, uh, and people mentioned it a few times, is flying with a flight controller um, and using it with the receiver attached. So I, I tested this out and uh, this seems to work fine. If I plug this in, this is a little Rush FPV stack I reviewed before, and when I plug it in on USB, it powers the receiver as well. So using that, it will say alternate joystick. So if we use to, this comes up as STM32 virtual comport in FS mode, catchy. We will need to do some remapping here. Pitch, roll, throttle, your. Yours good, pitch is good. Uh, Okay, pitch is reversed. There we go. So now I'm wireless on this this one. Obviously I could plug this in USB anyway. I was just rudely interrupted there by my camera's memory card filling up and I had to take the camera down and uh, start again. So I apologize for any continuity differences. But we were talking about this guy and hooking it up to um, a flight controller like this. So. Yeah, what I wanted to, to mention, if I go and uh, fly, uh, it feels really, really good. Like, really responsive, the sticks are really smooth. 
Thank you. Um, and you've got uh, a, an, an option there. If you've got a something like a Tyrannus, which has OpenTX 2.3 or later on, and you connect on USB, you'll get a really good experience. If you've got two, uh, less than 2.3 on OpenTX, or, or, and you've got a Jumper or a Tyrannus or something like that, then the resolution on the sticks is not as good. And similarly, if you're using a little USB dongle, uh, well, they vary, but even the, the good ones aren't as good as the resolution you get from a radio. So if you've got a radio and an old flight controller, and especially if you've got one of those all-in-one flight controllers with the receiver built in using SPI, that's really handy because you can just plug it in and that's that's a, a really cheap method of having like a, a wireless yeah. controller. But yeah, using um, a proper radio connected to the receiver um, is really, really good. Um, I'm not going to talk about how to get into that here. What I did is I rewrote a load of the wiki and I tried to include as much sort of step throughs about getting your radios sorted out as possible. Um, and I've even included a link from it. If you go to uh, keys and instructions, you'll see there's a wiki page back its open browser there. And if you click on that, it will indeed open up a browser window and show you the wiki and you can look at what you need to do there. So I mentioned I changed the handling of the quad. What I talked about last time is maybe looking into how throttle curves work. I imagine that it would be sort of, it, it goes up high and then falls off later on with the, the power output compared to the throttle. But surprisingly, what I found out is looking at some charts um, that reported the power output on various props for a 2300 kV motor, versus the amount of throttle and plotted on the graph, it was it was pretty linear. So I thought, ah, that's not right. And I felt like we had not enough power at the bottom end and potentially too much at the top end um, if you really go for it. So what I did instead is, well, first off, I, I changed some of the physics. So I changed the weight of the quad to be more realistic that an actual quad weighs. And I looked at the amount of drag it was producing and I tuned that a little bit more feeling like when you're going along, how much fall off do you have uh, horizontally before you sort of stop and just fall off. And then I thought about how the power settings worked. And what I wanted to implement is thinking about how much more power you'd have depending on the velocity you were traveling. So example, if you're going full throttle, um, or even if you're not going full throttle, but you're going full speed, and then you whack full throttle on, then that power is not going to produce any more speed. Similarly, if you're doing no speed at all and you whack the throttle on, you're going to get a really fast throttle response from it. So what I did, I came up with an algorithm that works out exactly how much potential power you've got based on the velocity you're currently traveling at. Um, and it gives you a, a varying amount of power. Um, I was sort of thinking of this as an experiment and thought it might be a bit clanky, but having flown it, it actually seems to really work. And what it does, it limits the top speed without limiting the power output that you can have. So, because I didn't want, what, what I was trying to avoid is of course going infinite miles an hour on a quad, because that just doesn't happen. But I wanted to be able to produce a lot of power instantly because that's what quads feel like. And that's what I've tried to tune. Now this is important to note because what I then did is I rebased the, the throttle multiplier to one based on this. So uh, I know a lot of guys were flying with throttle multipliers of something like 2, 2.8, even even higher than that. If you look at the quad now, uh, this is uh, a throttle multiplier of one. It will take off pretty, pretty early and it's got a lot of power there. So you probably don't want to have a throttle multiplier of 2.4. You might want to go back and reset everything to defaults before you start. But yeah, I'm really happy with the way the physics work now. I think they're, they, they, they should be quite subtle changes, um, but I'm, I'm happier about you can, you've got more power to come out of a dive. Um, but yes, you, there is a limit on the top speed and I can vary what that is um, with my sort of the, the, my base power output, which I can use to simulate different sorts of motors or different sort of props, that sort of thing. And that is everything for today. So plans for next time would be something a bit more exciting. Um, you know, it's really important to have controllers working, but I'd prefer to do something more exciting, similar to sort of putting cars into chase around and stuff. So 
Not sure what that's going to be yet. Maybe more chasing, maybe some other feature. We'll, we'll figure it out as I go. Won't be for a while because I'm going on yet another holiday for a week. Uh, so at least a, a few weeks before any further updates. But of course, any suggestions or things you'd like to see, you can put them down below as per usual. And I have the download links to the new version, uh, email address where you can get hold of me if there's an issue, the GitHub repository, all that sort of stuff is in the description. You have to expand it and it will show you all the governs. In the meantime, please don't forget to like or dislike if you didn't like it. Comment down below, subscribe and click on the little bell icon if you can find it and it'll tell you when I'm uploading more stuff. Uh, problems, comments, suggestions, of course, shove them in the comments, send me an email and I do what I can. Uh, until next time. Catch you later. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.